about. And my first thought was all the volunteers that came to the night ministry to serve meals and how was that going to be handled. There's some real nice hoodies over here. Our primary goal, keep the doors open, keep the wheels on the bus turning, keep the outreach teams on the street, but to do so in a way that kept everybody as safe as we possibly could. That was the biggest challenge. We knew the need was there. The people we serve are the ones who've fallen through whatever safety nets our system has. Our system isn't built to serve these folks. They're very much forgotten about. Night ministry, good morning. If you're awake, come on out. As a team, we kept coming in and getting the job done because we were sure passionate about good. our friends out there on the street. OK, what did you say you fell or were in a car wreck or what happened? No, nah, I got attacked on the L. No one on our team is going to say no if they think that they can help somebody in that moment and that they have it within their ability to do one more step, to make one more call, to make one more trip, to stay out a little later. They're going to do it. We work so close together in already a, a stressful situation. When you add the COVID response on top of that, we fostered a real love and uh, connection to each other, a real dedication to each other's safety, which is important in the work we do. It's what the doctor <laughs> The only way to get through it is to work as a team. And as you know, there is no I in team. It was really amazing to see how the youth programs team at the Night Ministry really came together to help us. And we also had senior management offering to come in to do shifts. So it really was an all hands on deck approach. We know people were out suffering. So our decentralized approach to providing services out on street med allowed us to really react very quickly during the COVID response. When they call us back, that's when you just talk to the doctor on the phone. So right off the bat, we rolled out a pilot project for being able to use telemedicine when we're out on the street in the moment. So if you have any other psychiatric issues, they've got doctors that will help you with those medications right on board. You're able to bring a resource to treat opioid use disorder and to do psych med management you're hitting two of the major reasons people end up being homeless. Telemedicine is so perfectly tailored to help those people get the help they need. We pretty much quarantine inside together. Our supportive services department helped us come up with innovative games and programming for the youth. And it was really important for us to still offer things that we would normally offer. Literacy programming, whether it's financial, we still were able to do that, but from a different lens. Yes, the night ministry did move to a new headquarters during the pandemic. And we also moved one of our shelter programs to that same location. It was odd because in the midst of all of the chaos, the move itself was a reminder to us that there's hope, that things need to keep moving forward, that we will survive and we will get through this and we'll be around to use this new building. When I walked into the crib for the first time, it was like finding a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It was everything that I expected to be. It was very emotional. It's like buying your first home and you have your keys and you get to move in and you get to see what you worked hard for and then you get to see the expression on the young people's faces when they see it. A lot of bathrooms and there's like a computer room and there's a space to just go and sit down and have a cup of coffee if you want to. And so just to have all of that, it's so rewarding. It just makes the work you do so, so worth it. People are good and people care and people love and people act compassionately. And we cannot do our work without that love and that compassion of those who stand beside us. In the darkest initial days of the pandemic, the outpouring of support was just overwhelming. Community members, individuals, making hundreds and hundreds of sandwiches, they would just deliver it to my doorstep. There were times I had to fill up my entire car and bring it in and take it out on the street. When you're exposed to the sometimes the uglier side of human nature, the angelic side can be very overwhelming and, and a wonderful reprieve. Our volunteers are very dedicated and they're passionate about the crib. Because volunteers were probably not gonna be face-to-face -face with clients, I decided that I would support at least once a week a meal from my family. My decision was to cook some of them, but more importantly, to support the local businesses in my neighborhood. And I went to them and I asked them to prepare the meals for me. 
it was just super important because I knew that volunteers were not going to be on the front lines with the people in need. We've learned a lot during 2020, this year that has been like no other. You need somebody to man, food. We continue to be reminded and learn about the resiliency of those whom we serve, that despite the pandemic, despite the chaos in the world, they are survivors. And that resiliency is an inspiration to us. I am so grateful to work in an organization that values its employees, that values our clients, and has a mission statement that we actually live by and create our programs by. I've been given professionally the freedom to explore and grow different options and grow the program in different ways. And if you need us, this is our cell phone. I'm just grateful to have found a place in modern day medicine that allows me to do that. I would say on behalf of CRIP staff, my outreach team, and just all of Night Ministry to our supporters, our donors, our volunteers, that this could not have been done without the support of those individuals. We are extremely thankful and, and happy to have that support. It is our foundation. It is the heart of the Night Ministry. The experience of the last eight months has taught me with regard to gratitude is how fragile life is and how fragile the world is. We can only strengthen ourselves through that fragility with the help of others. And when that help comes, when those individuals are standing beside us to prop us up, to assist us in our work, that's gratitude. That instills in me a sense of gratefulness like I've never felt before. Thank you, Bill. It's a really powerful recording and brand new. They just did that in November. Just, I will ask questions in just a minute. Bill and I want to have a couple things. One of the things that always strikes me about the Knight Ministry is how broad their ministry is. We've focused on the homelessness, people experiencing homelessness, particularly young people and our work with the crib. We had promised last spring before all this happened that we would be muscle for helping move the crib from location to location. And sadly, they, uh, didn't need our masked muscle, so we missed that opportunity. And I've not yet been there. Has anybody seen the new crib yet? I've been no. giving them their space, we'll go down. But they do health, they do all of this stuff, but we have focused on hom homelessness, especially for young people. And um, we decided better to go narrow and deep than, than shallow. So Bill, do you have any uh, thoughts about what we just saw or where we're headed? Um, no, I just, I, I watched that. I mean, it's a, it's a very touching video, like you said. and. Um... You know, it does does inspire hope, I think. And and you know, regarding the crib, I know many of us took a trip down there whenever that was a while. It seems like a, a decade ago at this point. But I think uh, it was a thousand uh, years, Bill. Yeah, I think. A thousand years, but you know, just uh, just watching the videos, it's remarkable how much more um, much more capable the space is that they have now. I mean, they used to be cramped up. They had to roll out mats to sleep, and now, thanks to folks like us. They have beds to sleep in and um you know it's the same 21 person facility but it's so much more and um so i am just so grateful that we as a congregation could support that you know and you you watch those people and you, you can see that their hearts are so into the work they do and it's um it's very touching so yeah thanks so uh I remind you about the, everything we're asking for and gail and charlie are on my screen i don't know if they're on anybody's screen there are elves next week uh, we're inviting you all folks to bring things on Sunday the 20th, and then Charlie and Gail are going to make sure that that gets delivered in time for Christmas. So Gail, Charlie, thank you in advance. You're, they also delivered the pies to the uh, food pantry after we did pledge and pie, and uh, Charlie takes our food to the pantry every time the box fills up. So thank you so much, you guys. It's really more important than you can know. Hey, Pastor, so, I, can, I, can, I can put up the um, just the, the donation slide real quick if that helps. We can just kind of just I know I know everyone's probably seen it a million times, but 
just what we're looking for. And this is straight from what the night ministries asked us for. So um, you're getting so good at cheering, Bill. It's amazing. I, I try. Can Your everyone excuse, proud. Can you see that? Yes. I'll actually put it in. Let's see. Put it in. There you go. So, you know, it's 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 clothing. Um, as always, uh, safety items, gift cards, and of course, always cash is, is welcome as well. Um, I see Joan Johns on this call. She's a, used to be a member at St. John's Wilmette. Um, so many congregations around us do very different sorts of things. Joan, do you want to unmute yourself and tell us about St. John's gift to the night ministry, just to say that all of us working together meet needs. Joan? Thank you. Um, this... For years and years, St. John's Wilmet has had a group of uh, people who make quilts. And previously, about 100 quilts would be made in a year, and they'd be packed up and sent off to Lutheran World Relief. Well, as the, the numbers of uh, quilters dwindled and, and so on, this year there were only 40 quilts, and they decided to give them locally, and they donated those 40 quilts to Night Ministry. So I was really, really pleased to hear that, and, and particularly since they have the new crib and those beds now and so on, and I thought, what, what a great idea St. John's had to make uh, the donation that way. Also, St. John's once a month um, makes sandwiches for uh, Night Ministry. And since I've got the mic, just for a second, Liz and I were, were sidebar chatting here, recalling that for a number of years here at Ascension, um, Lois Guyberson and Liz and I and lots of other people helped put together some uh, sacks at Christmas time of things that Night Ministry um, was looking for, like hand warmers and socks and that sort of thing. So there's even more than what Bill listed. Thank you, John. I'm for sorry for this. lying. <laughs> well, it's we have, a, we have a long history with the night ministry. Thank you, Joan. And you know, it's interesting. Um, the Christmas stockings is part of what we used to do. The hygiene bags, just gallon bags. We also did Christmas stockings that we would fill. And this is why it's so important. Um, we always communicate with our ministry partners and say, what do you need? Not here's what we would like to do, but what do you need? And so two years ago was the last time we did the Christmas stockings. And I forget how many we took down, but I drove them down um, probably, I don't know, two weeks before Christmas or something. And I said, um, I hope you have enough. You know, like we could rustle up some more. And the person who met me at the door said, can I tell you the truth? I said, yeah. She said, we need 1500 Christmas stockings. She said, we have 2,500. She said, we have to find organizations to take the Christmas stockings that all of our supporting congregations make. It's a very appealing project. It's a very time limited project and lots of people do it. So at that point, our leadership team who was working in this said, others are carrying that piece now. What can we do? So that's why our projects have changed over time is because we keep saying to the night ministry, what do you need? Not, gosh, we've always done Christmas stockings. We would like to do that again. Um, so it's just a constantly evolving set of needs that they have. And we try to be responsive and respectful of their ministry. Nancy Nagel here, if I may. Nancy. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm going to say 15 or 20 years ago when Ruth Circle was very active, we had, uh, we collected cookies. We didn't bake them that year, but we got them from the congregation. And we came to my house and put them in little baggies and I carted them down there. So, you know, it goes back a lot longer even than the Christmas stockings. And then I have a question going back again, but they may not have a need anymore. But they used to collect a little, I'm calling them sample sizes of soaps and things that you pick up in a, a hotel. Uh, are they still collecting those? Do they have a need for those? They, they are still collecting them. And if you've ever been down to their place, they have thousands and thousands and thousands of small bottles of shampoo and soap and toothpaste and all that. So again, that's a piece that's being met um, and in some ways being overly met. They have a hard time finding enough volunteers um, to sort of assemble all those bags. So we'll stay in touch with them. The time may come when they need that again. The other thing that's interesting is of course that hotels aren't doing that anymore. 
even before the pandemic hit, they were getting rid of the little tiny bottles of things because it was environmentally wasteful. Um, and so again, all these things are changing all the time about what's available and what's needed. But thank you, Nancy, for reminding about the cookies. Yes, we've had decades of work with the Knight Ministry. So if I have a bunch of those small things, you would not want for me to bring them next Sunday, then I got it. Bring them along and we will deliver them and add them to their pool. They will use them. I just don't know if they'll use them right away. I see something in the chat. Barb Ford, great that you asked ministry what they need. Yes, that's a, thanks Barb. It was a sort of a shift in thinking here um, that this is about them, not about us. And it ends up being about us because it's so gratifying. Comments, questions, thoughts, wondering. Gail, unmute, please. Thank you. Good reading this morning, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Good texts, as usual. I'm right? sure Isaiah is happy that you feel that way. <laughs> do, we've not been to the new crib. We will do that next week. The, are, um, are those who are sleeping at the crib invited to remain in that spot all day long or are they at some point in time sent back out um can they can they be in that space 24 7. bill do you know if the rules have changed since they've moved i don't know i don't know if the rules have changed but i know from previous it was strictly an overnight um right. facility yep. yeah i don't i don't think it's changed I, I haven't heard anything about that but you'll find out next week i guess we will we you can will. tell us. We'll expect a full report. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah. Liz just put in the chat, remembering more Christmas stockings that we did. It's been a project and she helped the confirmation kids last year back. Remember Liz, when confirmation was actually meeting in person? Um, Liz helped pull all that together for us. It was fun. Thank you. My goodness, they're compliant, Bill. I'm not used to this at Ascension. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill, why don't you make an invitation again? And um, then we can call it a day. Remind him about next week. Oh, so next next Sunday, one to three, bring all your, uh, your gifts and um, be there at two and you'll get the benefit of a uh, little caroling time. So sounds like it'll be a nice day. Let's hope the weather and, and uh, a little 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 preview of the preview. We're going to have a fantastic um, vitality year coming up. Um, yeah, I don't I don't want to give away anything, but uh, the vitality team um, has been doing some fantastic preparation. We have a whole basically agenda and syllabus lined out for the the spring that uh, we'll be sharing here um, the first of the year, essentially and uh, provide a council approves it and all those good things. But um, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, aggressive agenda. Um, and hopefully uh, you all like the learning that comes out of it. Wonderful. Well, thanks everybody. Bill's the host, so we'll let him finish up. He's also recording this. So um, blessed third Sunday of Advent. It was a pleasure to worship together and uh, perhaps we'll see you next Sunday, both on Zoom and maybe in the afternoon. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.